now we are live. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce Dennis Ackerman. He's located in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. He's founder of the Arbus Business School. It's a school which is giving excellent education for modern management. And Dennis and I have a common passion. I am Franciscus van der Lucht, founder of Enlightened Leadership, Leading with Light. Dennis uses meditation as a tool to boost his business and feel happy and healthy, be strong in business. We have a common passion in that, and we like our listeners to involve in this conversation. Ask your questions, and Dennis, you told me you were on a 10 days retreat for meditation, and some people were telling you, Dennis, what are you doing? You know, you should work. You shouldn't go and just sit and meditate. What was your reply? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your invitation, and uh, happy to discuss this topic close to my heart. Um, yeah, I've been to several uh, retreats, um, but indeed uh, the first response was um, you are escaping. And that's quite an interesting one, because I believe that on a daily basis, many people are escaping. Uh, they are running away from themselves. And when you go into this 10-day meditation retreat, there's no escaping at all. You are completely on your own and uh, there's no running away. There is all the thoughts, the bad ones and the good ones, it all comes to you. It's a great place uh, to reflect, to recharge, to recover. And if you really go deep into a meditation, you will get insights for what I call the knowing. Yeah, this is not about rational decisions. This is about uh, getting clarity on what matters for you in your life, in business, and in every aspect. Uh, so that's, for me, definitely not escaping. Yes, yes. And this is what I feel uh, we were just be uh, talking before uh, the um, our conversation live. Um, I had a meditation teacher who was comparing the your idea your ambition for action with an arrow and to achieve to achieve to get that arrow on your goal you need a bow if you retard the bow with the arrow and you point it at your ambition your goal it will go there it makes your mind stronger this is my experience that's why i advocate meditation meditation makes you feel much better much stronger and it can also order your mind and as we talked with dennis uh, if you meditate you get some feedback you get feedback to your mind and to your body if you are overactive your short meditation will tell you that you will feel it if you have a physical discomfort you also feel it through the meditation please relate dennis more about your experiences with meditation and how it helps you to be excellent in action yes sure um since 2007 i practice meditation and common misconception about meditation is that it's always about uh, sitting and uh, thinking about nothing. And that's what a lot of people think uh, meditation is about. But in the core essence of it, meditation is about focus. So you can also get into that state in other means uh, other than sitting. It can be by uh, singing, by running by focusing on one activity at a time. And there are different forms of meditation that brings you in a certain uh, mind state. And some people also say, yeah, that's all that superstitious stuff, uh, new age, et cetera, et cetera. But this is as rational as, as it can be. Um, I have proof for myself. So there's, there's nothing about belief. Uh, this is about practice. Meditation is also a muscle. So you need to do that on a regular basis. Uh, everybody knows if you uh, do some training in sports, uh, the, the two weeks after you've you quit 
uh, with any particular training program, then it's all gone. Yeah. Now it's the same with meditation. So I recommend everyone to do it just five minutes every day is far more effective than a 10 day retreat once per five years for sure. Um, and also identify uh, three different levels of meditation. Um, one is, I would say that is the one that you have to do on a regular basis to be effective. That is to deal with your stress, uh, with your, the bucket is full, okay? Um, that is, I think, your basic ed daily maintenance. Then if you go one step further, and uh, I also try to relate this to uh, leadership here, um, the stress bucket is very important. And how often we were in a meeting that was very tense, and your next meeting is with one of your team members, and basically your bucket is overflowing, and your emotions from the previous meeting um, will all be thrown at the next person who just happens to be there, who is totally innocent, has nothing to do with your previous meeting. That's where, you know, this stress management, your emotional intelligence comes into play. So the next level of meditation, that's where you develop more uh, empathy, uh, your soft skills, your compassion, where your yeah, your listening and being there for a person uh, being developed. Yeah, that's the I would say that's the advanced level of meditation, and the mastery level I would say that is developing, and that's typically what happened to me in, in meditation retreats. So that's where you develop a strong intuition. So for visionary, uh, visionary capabilities. Um, getting new insights and clarity on the very core of who you are and why you are here. And that, that is developed in, in the mo most advanced level of meditation. So, yeah, there are different flavors. There's different levels of meditation depending on uh, your aims and your commitment to it. Yes, I think, uh, yes, it's a beautiful sum up of... Uh different effects of meditation different levels of meditation mm. dennis and i had um, have a common friend uh, is Ola connor connor Valuf, who indeed um is a visionary coach he's he's a coach which uh, helps people to put on some glasses to look further into their own future to create their own future. Um, Dennis, I, I think I like that very much. Can you mo more expand about how meditation can help you to create your future and create a vision which can create your future? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I also believe that uh, the greatest leader of leaders of this world uh, started with a vision. And with vision, I mean a deep conviction about a better future. And everybody can come up with a vision statement and uh, we have the famous uh, frames on the wall. Uh, we have a vision mission statement and uh, that's all uh, by the word and sometimes the, the leadership team go to an uh, off-site uh, session for a few days and they have to come up with something but for me you can come up with great phrases from that for sure i'm not dismissing that um, but from the the core of um, getting clarity you need to have a clear sky first uh, as long as there are clouds uh, that are disturbing your your thoughts your uh, mostly by emotions mostly by the daily rat race uh, that's not not the right environment to to get that clarity so you first need to uh, get out of the way of yourself uh, so to speak and then a vision can arrive in a way that can be super frightening it can be scary uh, because it is, it is overwhelming, it's powerful, it's beyond what you thought is possible. And yet it feels exactly right. Yes, yes, I think I have a similar experience. Um, 
there's a common reaction to when I start talking about a vision. Um, you're nuts. You're crazy. You know, this doesn't fit in this world. Uh, how did you think of such a stupid thought? Then later you start working on it and gradually you realize your vision. Sometimes in the beginning you are alone with your vision. But gradually when people see, oh, it makes you more happy, it makes you more productive, then people start to join. And when it starts earning, they come back and they are the first to earn. And your first, this is what correlates with you, yeah, it's overwhelming. A vision is overwhelming because, in fact, we create something which is not there. And that's why people say you are stupid, because people tend to accept what is there already, what is there from tradition, but we have to grow. We can't stay on one tradition. We have a beautiful word, but we have to continue. And I like, I think I like most this connection with um, meditation and vision. Uh, it helps to create vision, to expand the mind, as you say. Also, when we are very honest, Dennis, uh, please comment on this. We live in a so fast changing world, especially today with COVID, with war in Europe. Uh, we have so many very hot things which completely change our economy, our, our outlook. Um, if the management board makes a beautiful phrased vision and they put it on the wall, this is our goal. It's not adapted to today. It's not today a reality. We have to revision all the time. Uh, I think this is highly missing in um, especially large corporations. They can't they can't change, or it's very difficult to change. They slowly change. And some corporations failed. Nokia failed, for instance. And it's not the only one. Kodak failed. There are many failures through lack of vision, lack of quietness of a board, which is adaptable. Maybe they meditated, but they didn't do the right meditation. Maybe they didn't meditate. They were only fighting between each other. Please comment on how you think that meditation can help to adapt in our very fast changing world. I think this is very important for business leaders, for political leaders. Political leaders, what I hear about political leaders today is they are firefighters. They don't foresee the future of their people. They don't know how to create a beautiful future for their people. If there's a conflict or a problem, they fight it. And that's good. Okay. But the prevention, the quietness lacks to create, prevent all these conflicts and problems. Yes, um, I hear two things um, from you, Francisco. The first part is indeed the, uh, the business examples that you gave where we now know it went seriously wrong. And that is typically an example, not only on company level, but also on the personal level, is that we tend to hold on uh, to the past in the sense that, hey, what worked yesterday, what brought us here, uh, uh, will still uh, hold through for the future because there's a fear of making changes of a successful recipe. Yeah. So with the Nokia and Kodiak, that was definitely this, uh, the case. And the risk management, especially in big uh, corporates, is such that uh, it has to be minimized at all costs. So the boldness of a, of a vision does not fit in that model. They are actually opposites. Right? Small entrepreneurs, visionary entrepreneurs or inventors uh, don't have that baggage. They have actually nothing to lose. So that fear of um, the existing situation and losing out on that is not so prevalent with these uh, people. 
So I think that's about the attachment. And yeah, I think companies need to reinvent themselves in order to stay relevant. And that means not incremental. Uh, usually a vision is an incremental update uh, or some yeah, short-term goal uh, when we look at it. But you need to dare to break the walls down and, and really look at things from a completely different perspective. And that is a perspective that has to be future focused that is not there. And uh, that's the relevance of your existence for decades to come. And if you dare to do that, I'm looking for some examples where companies reinvented themselves on time. And yes, I know it's, a, it's considered a bit of a dinosaur company, but IBM, uh, if they stuck to their uh, mainframe hardware, they will still, uh, they were completely irrelevant uh, in the digital technology of today. But the, on time, they went to software and then they went to services to uh, stay relevant in the market. So it's also about timing and, and, and building from there. So that's one thing. The other one that you talk about is indeed a visionary leadership in the political arena in country leaders. Well, for sure, the challenges that the world has been through the last few years uh, are not easy for any leader. Uh, that's uh, that for sure. But what was severely missing and still missing is um, it became very dogmatic. And there's a lot of polarization going on and people take positions. And also there's no vision or hope or inspiration. And there's only a handful of leaders in every generation that can be qualified in, in that elite group. Yeah. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, Martin Luther King, to name a few, um, mm -hmm. Obama in his first term. Um, mm -hmm. There was an, a message of hope and people are more drawn and more motivated, in my opinion, in hope than in fear. And Brexit was all about fear. And a lot of other political decisions that have been made. Um, they had the authoritarian system versus the democratic system. It's all based on holding on your, to your own system is the, the best thing. And uh, the, the other one is the enemy. It's, it's, it's a zero sum game that, that they are all in. And that doesn't get us anywhere. We need to go beyond that. And to be very honest, Francisco, it's a pity to see that there's no such leader in the world of today that at least I know of. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think um, it's a great challenge. Mm. One of the aspirations um, our Enlightened Leadership Academy has is to um, increase the ability to make constructive dialogues. Um, I see the level of diplomacy in the world is extremely low. Um, very nice you said we need leaders who go beyond countries, who go beyond... Um, economic values, um, leaders who can inspire the people, who know how they make their own sacrifices to, to give the people their heart and their beautiful ideas, their hard work. Uh, yes, we need leaders who break down walls instead of building walls. Uh, we have now a tradition of leaders who are great in building walls, literally building walls between nations, but we need leaders who are breaking down walls. And recently, uh, I was talking with a good friend on from LinkedIn, Sibyl Terhaar. Um, kindness is the new way of leading uh, empathy empathy um, being kind being hopeful giving hope yes inspirational leaders where are our we need new inspirational leaders inspirational leaders they also are often not liked in the beginning because they say things which are unpolitical uneconomical But also here, I see meditation could help. Meditation again. Imagine a very tired 
and very excited politician starts to meditate. Maybe he gets a headache at first. What will I say at the parliament meeting? What will I do? How can I be in the best political position next time? How can I show up? But this is not what people need. They don't need an overexcited politician who is running for the next elections. They need somebody inspiring. Yeah, ins inspiring is more than indeed being a populist. Yeah? Because yes. populists present simple solutions to complex problems based on half truths. That's how I see populists. That is mm -hmm. not an inspiring visionary leader, but they attract quite a following because people think that that is the solution for a short term. Mm -hmm. But if you give them a, a place of power, you will see that this, this will not go anywhere. Yes. Yes, tell me your Orbis business school, maybe tell something about it. Um, do you have built a place for reflection or meditation in your program? Um, how does your program look in, in general? Um, you're teaching an MBA for modern leaders, for young leaders, for aspiring leaders. Um, they can follow it online. Can you say, say something about uh, Orbis, Dennis? Uh, yes, so the essence of Orbis Business School is transformation. And meditation is also a tool to achieve transformation. Uh, it's a tool of unlearning more than learning, perhaps. Mm. And it's the conversion from doing to being. And our focus is on three domains, uh, transforming yourself. That's where it starts. I think change starts with yourself. And uh, that's both from within uh, your inner work. And that's also about developing your visionary skills. Uh, what is your, your view of a better future? Then transforming your business, because if you change yourself, the world, uh, the world around you starts to change. Your, your leadership style will become more effective. Uh, you will be more in, in, inspiring more empty, it's like that. And then the, other, the last part is transforming the world. Well, that sounds perhaps very ambitious, but I believe uh, what is the purpose of a business is of course beyond uh, a profit-making machine uh, reporting uh, the quarterly results for shareholders. So um, the very existence of a business uh, ought to be more than uh, just a money-making machine and that impact on the world uh, can be uh, manifest itself in many different ways uh, but it all starts with yourself uh, as a leader and we bring the tools and frameworks and uh, nothing superstitious uh, to to get you there uh, how do you get this compelling vision for yourself um, how can you create more impact with your business uh, that that is what i'm trying to do and we our KPI, our goal is not expressed, our business plan, if you like, is not expressed in numbers or revenue and numbers of students or revenue, but it's in the impact that we can make together. And uh, we call it a tribe. So we are not talking about alumni, but we are talking about a tribe uh, of uh, like-minded and, and non-like-minded people. It's a, it's a diverse group of people. We work in small groups um, because I feel them, then we can really, uh, yeah, have a more effective uh, approach together. It's a journey uh, of nine months. And um, it's amazing to be, uh, to be with these wonderful people and help them. That's great. Uh, I like it very much. Mm. I think if you would have existed earlier, I would have uh, followed your MBA there. You know, I always uh, wanted to follow some MBA. I oriented, but for me, it was all too uh, too much in the brain, uh, too much in the mind. Um, this is another topic I think we we can enter. We, we are all the time looking for what is meditation changing? What is meditation changing effectively uh, for active people? Uh, also, in uh, my endeavors to popularize meditation amongst people, people think, oh, meditation? 
oh, I must live celibate, no coffee, uh, live in a monastery, um, think only about God. Uh, they have a kind of weird meditation is connected with a weird, weird connection to all this kind of only meditation. But meditation becomes very useful for active people. I would even say it's not worth to meditate so much if you are alone and in a monastery. It would be better. The good old monasteries, they would do a lot. Look to the monks of St. Francis, for instance. They would go and pray in the mountains, and they would come back, and they would do crazy things to convince the people, yes, do some kind of reflection or meditation. I remember a conversation between, I was reading a lot of books, uh, my name is Francisco, so I, I was studying this team a lot. I remember a conversation bet between two of these monks, they said, you know, when we go back from the mountains, we are full of this happiness of our meditation and are completely inspired. We go to the marketplace in our, you know, uh, our clothes are not so nice, so they, 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 we can't attract them with that. And we're talking about our beautiful experience of the spirit of God and everything. And nobody's listening to us. Everybody runs to their own business. I have an idea. We undress ourselves completely and we continue talking about God and our beautiful experiences. So they all they had all kinds of nuts ideas to propagate their um, inspiration. And I can tell you until until today, these Franciscan monks, they are the most active. They like to propagate their inspirations. Um, I like your story, you know, we are creating a tribe, a tribe which is feeling, yes, we can do it, and we can do it different. We can do it with a smile, and we can do it with happiness. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. Business is not only for money. Uh, money is an effect of doing something good for other people. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's also uh, definitely how I see it, uh, Franciscus. Um, there's the, yeah, there's an, a religious or um, superstitious dogma around meditation, uh, that, which I think still needs a bit of, let's say, education to uh, to the to a lot of people. And yeah, the proof is in the eating. Um, I would say uh, if you only can dedicate, everybody can dedicate five minutes per day. I would say. Yeah. Uh, just try for yourself and this is it's a it's a marathon it's not a sprint it's not a quick fix in that sense so if you do it at least for three months consistently every day for five minutes uh, then uh, you will see uh, some effect for sure and not everybody has to go to a 10-day retreat uh, if you're not up to it you know uh, that's that's just one way of doing it uh, and also sometimes I also thought yeah what did I really gain from it the way I see it, it is like it's lifting the ocean floor. So on the surface, you just go on with your daily lives and you fall back into certain routines quite easily. But over time, when you look back and you think, hey, there, there have been some gradual changes uh, in me and also, therefore, the way I look at things or things that are happening to me that are... That, are, that have changed. That, that's mm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And all the all my bold decisions in my life uh, that uh, felt scary but right, they all turn out exactly as as I thought uh, they would be, and I have zero regrets on them. And that that is for me the best proof that this works. Exactly. Exactly. I think you said it very right. There's a lot of um, ignorance about meditation in our overworked world. Uh, people think about it as an escape. Uh, also, it um, it has too much religious connotation. Mm. 
You can call it also very, in very many different ways, like um, the studying of the mind, the studying of mind and body in a more quiet um, activities like sitting or resting, an ideal form of resting, uh, building resilience. Um, yes, I feel, I don't know how you feel about it, I feel a mission in propagating meditation as a means to make this world a little bit better, a little bit more kind, empathic. Um, but not only. Mm, the people talk very much about money. Money is still important. Money always will stay important. Financial prosperity is, is great for everyone. The, the um, return on investment. Uh, if you talk about the return on investment on meditation, on the meditation course, on the time for meditation, uh, on the payment for a teacher, or uh, for for instance, for a payment of an MBA at Orbis School, uh, where you learn not only about how to do business, but how to make holistic business, uh, a prosperous business, not only for yourself, but for your society. And I think the Roy is very great, very difficult to express it. I, I, I do not know about any scientific research on this. I think our friends, uh, John Spence and Oleg Konovalov, they were... They had some tries of calculating the return on investments on vision, which was more than 2,000. You know, 2,000 times your investment uh, as an outcome, especially when this is on leadership level. When you as a leader can be inspiring, empathic, move your company, and even more, if you are really that rock and you have this quietness of mind and a vision you have a vision for the future of your company i think the roy can be incredible what do you think about it dennis about the word the effective word for your action of meditation how can meditation make you um, have a greater return on your investments. Yeah, that's um, uh, in a return on investment in monetary terms. Um, if you pitch for investors, then they usually want to see some kind of proof in the markets already before they buy into an idea. So uh, uh, only a vision, and even if that is really a true conviction that comes from the, uh, the deepest insights that you have gained in today's world is still hard and hard sell. Uh, indeed, like you mentioned, uh, people are bordering on um, you are mad, crazy, uh, out of this world, ridiculous, um, you're an outsider, uh, you will not get any funding uh, for that. And so I believe that you can come up with business models where the end goal is still a bold vision, but you need to cut it in, in slices to make it more manageable and uh, investable for, uh, let's say, the real markets in, in this world. So meaning to say that there are intermediate steps where you can move parts of your business uh, into the still in the direction of your, your end goal, but that's a long-term uh, goal anyway. Uh, you will not achieve that overnight. And that is where investors uh, might be interested in. And from there, you, uh, you will uh, gradually move towards uh, this bolder vision where uh, if you declare that uh, certain inventions that we take for granted right now, if you, if you talk about it even 50 years ago, 
that everybody would think, yeah, what, what science fiction is this? Uh, what science fiction movie is this about, right? And so that, yeah, I, I think it is an evolution more than a revolution, if that helps. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, you're right. Um, all things come by time, by repetition, uh, the same as meditation. You get good effects by meditation, by repetition. Uh, also, um, trying to have um, effect as with new visionaries for this world working together with compelling visions indeed which give results then yes gradually we will find it uh, it is in fact it's two worlds which you're trying to put together the world of the, the the inner inner person and the world of the outer person the needs of of matter and the needs of mind and heart um, i think we are much neglecting today the the um the mind and the heart we are straining the mind and the heart for too much matter um i i have seen also for instance poland is still in a curve of developing its matter roads are building are being built and so forth and so forth poland which i left 25 years ago um, was then already on on a high level of economic development i would say they were on their top of economic developments with an incredible return of their investments incredible business projects um incredible economy and countries which are at the top not only have space to grow anymore you must see something similar in Malaysia. Malaysia is also still a growing economy. Yeah, quite comparable with Poland in many ways, I would say. Uh, but mm -hmm. you're right. I, I would say that if, uh, if also the audience know about it, so can look it up there, the Maslow pyramids. Um, I think the uh, Netherlands is all, uh, close to the self-actualization stage almost. Yeah? Uh, where you need to reinvent yourself. Huh? Where is Where are they? Uh, what what is your vision of the future in 20 years from now mm. uh, how the country will look like uh, so there are different stages in in developing uh, countries uh, indeed yeah I, I, I also see that and um and i think what what is what is important is how do you connect with the realities of today and um, how do you adapt your message so that people not only understand uh, but are also being inspired on different levels so when you talk about strategy and vision and you also see that sometimes with town hall meetings uh, that uh, the new strategy is presented to the people uh, that includes all different job types and uh, levels uh, including uh, the, the cleaning staff uh, etc how are you going to explain uh, your vision to them do they understand uh, what that means and Oleg uh, also mentioned that uh, can you explain your vision to your own children and do you do they understand what it is about so mm -hmm. I, I think in, in for different types of audiences of different levels of development you have different messages, messages and, mm -hmm. uh, a different horizon that you're you're looking at and different priorities mm -hmm. In, in a very poor country, uh, people are concerned with basic survival. Um, and I'm not sure we, who said this before, but there are so many lost Einsteins in, in Africa. Uh, is, it, is their brain capacity less than uh, elsewhere? Uh, but the only focus of the day is to get food on the table. You know? mm -hmm. So certain visions are too, too remote for them to relate to that. Uh, that's not their priority. That's not in their realm of, of, of possibilities in the near future. So you need to get them, you need to lift them up out of that fundamental challenges uh, or uh, let's 
say, deficiencies that you have in the lower levels of Maslow pyramid uh, in order you can get to a self-actualization uh, stage. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, I believe also there are uh, many future solutions. Um, rich countries can help poor countries. And the European Union is an aspiration to do like that. I think there are many kind of even global aspirations to do like that. But still, all the time, we enter the same problem. This, As, as you said, uh, it's a different language on different levels. How can leaders communicate better, business leaders, political leaders, to create a better world? I think economically it's possible, also spiritually it's possible. Mm. I think it needs a, more people who can think holistic, can think enlightened, beyond beyond the borders of their own person or country or global thinking or universal thinking, if you want to call it further. You know, we are, Elon Musk is going to Mars. <laughs> we have been to the moon. And uh, I think it's time for universal thinking. <laughs> Dennis, yeah. tell something more. We are now uh, online uh, 45 minutes. Um, we don't have the opportunity with this Zoom at this moment, with this Zoom meeting to ask questions. So um, listeners, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, and you have questions to uh, Dennis from Orbis, please, you can send it by his LinkedIn profile, Dennis Ackerman, you see it, or Orbis MBA on the net. And you can, it's easily, easy to find. Um, I would very much recommend an MBA at Orbis because this looks like the future education of business people, of leadership. Dennis, please tell something more to the people, what you want to tell, what you want to share for us. This is... Uh, we can easily talk about this for hours, Franciscus, for sure. <laughs> so then uh, <laughs> tell something uh, more and then Gadu will finish. I I will be ha very happy to repeat this in the future. Yeah, uh, like to, since we don't have an uh, interaction with our audience, um, if there's any specific topic that you uh, want us to highlight uh, in another session, uh, we, then uh, we are happy to... Uh, consider that and receive your uh, input and feedback. Uh, that would be great. And um, yeah, you, you, you mentioned about uh, MBA. Now, for us, the focus is not on the academic development, uh, as I think might be uh, clear from the way I presented. So this, this transformation is, is a personal uh, transformation. And uh, that also enables a business transformation and have a broader impact. Uh, for, so for us, it's, it's a professional and personal development rather than an academic qualification. Uh, yes, we do have certi certification, uh, but typically our audience is not just there to, to get a paper uh, and a nice title. Uh, it, is, uh, it is the impact and um, the doing uh, more than uh, the academic concepts uh, behind it. And we also thought that, um, yeah, a lot of those management frameworks are rather old, actually. I have, I have a uh, formal MBA myself from, an, uh, from another business school, and I thought, wow, some of the models they teach are really from the 1980s, where a good part of it still holds true. Um, but yeah, the world is changing. Uh, changes continues anyway. And um, for future focus, we need to rethink. We need, we need to do things differently. And also the momentum in this world, I, I really feel we are in a transitionary phase in this, mm -hmm. in this first half of the, of the decades. And 
very interesting times actually. Uh, and I'm still hopeful about the future despite some short-term challenges that we have in the, in the world. Um, I'm, I'm very hopeful and um, with the right people, we can do the right things. Yes, yes, uh, you said it right, uh, Dennis. I feel the same. Uh, they are very challenging times. Um, sometimes I compare it with um, this phase transition when uh, water goes to ice or water goes to steam. Um, there are very interesting parts and, and definitely um, I have planned also talks about it. Uh, this is a time in which some people say we go more from the heart, uh, from the mind to the heart. Uh, or we are more connecting the intelligence with hard emotional intelligence. We we are we are starting to think more complete, instead of only smart. We we become wise. We become become more holistic in our thinking. Yes, uh, you're right. We can talk for hours, and uh, I think we will repeat a session. We might want to repeat a session in which we can invite people in Zoom so that they can also interact and so forth. Uh, I'll think about the structure. Uh, for now, uh, Dennis, uh, please stay online for a moment. I uh, will end the conversation with the public. Uh, and I would like to thank our public very much for attending. And I hope uh, you have something useful for your daily life from our conversations. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ziskas, for the opportunity. It was a great conversation and I uh, hope it was useful for all the audience of today.